I am so excited you're here because I have several Dollar Tree truly high-end farmhouse DIYs on a budget that I know you're gonna love. So if that is something you're interested in, then just keep watching. To start off DIY number one, if you guys remember from the other day, we basically did this exact same thing, except this time I'm going to take four canvases from Dollar Tree. I'm going to take them out of the plastic and then I'm going to use my handy dandy staple pull that I got from Walmart to pull out all of the staples. Now, if you don't have a staple pull, all you need to use is like a screwdriver or something that you can get up under all of those staples. Um, it's really, really hard without a staple pull. I'm not going to lie. You can also cut them around the staples. Now, I personally don't like that either just because it just looks funny in the back. And then you have to use like needle nose pliers to pull that canvas away from the staples. So honestly, you can do it whatever way you're comfortable with. But I definitely, definitely recommend to invest in a nice staple pull. Next, I'm going to sand down the frames. Now this one, I don't know what was on it, you guys. You know the frames that are in the canvases from Dollar Tree are not the best, but they're not the worst either, so I'm not complaining. But it had this green dye on it, so I made sure to sand that smooth, and then I glued all of them together with some Dollar Tree wood glue and a dab of hot glue in between the wood glue. Now the wood glue is going to make sure that the hold lasts and the hot glue is going to make sure that it sticks together super quick. Now again, these frames are super cheap and they're not completely square. So in order to hold them together really nicely and evenly, I do use some clamps. Next, I'm going to take my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain and I like to pour it into a little container and then use it that way if I am not staining like a bigger piece where I can just um, squirt some of it onto the project. So I did just pour some into a Dollar Tree container and then I used a regular paintbrush to just paint on that stain. Now I love this Dixie Bell Voodoo Stain for many reasons. I am not sponsored by them. I just love the product. It's water-based. It doesn't stink. It dries down really quickly and it just looks absolutely gorgeous. So once I was done staining all of the entire inside of the frame, I make sure to stain the outside of the frame as well. And I know a lot of you guys like to finish the backs of your project, but because I knew this was going to be towards the wall, I did not worry about the back, but you can if you want. So you guys, I would not be able to do what I do without without my ketones right there that you seen was a healthy Red Bull. If you guys drink five hour energies or Red Bulls, please reach out to me. Let me help you drink something that's going to do the exact same thing, actually give you way more benefits and it's really good for you. It actually burns your fat for fuel giving you better focus, better mood, better muscle preservation, better sleep, better digestion, better fat loss. If you don't need to lose weight, then you can definitely use this as well. It is not even a fat loss product. It was actually formulated for the brain. So reach out to me. I would love to chat. I also made it into a business to where now you guys, I make crazy money just sharing my story and sharing how amazing that product is. So anyway, once it was stained, then y'all know I love dry brushing. So I did go ahead and dry brush some of my white Waverly chalk paint with my big chip brush all the way around each frame. Now, you guys have seen in that last haul that I did, that blue and white wall tiles. It was the first time that I saw those wall tiles. 
Um, but I just personally like the silver ones better so that I could paint it. Um, but if you guys like that white and blue look, I thought that that looked really gorgeous. It just doesn't fit my decor. So I did go with the silver ones and I did use four. I just put it to the back of one of the frames and then I used a Sharpie to put four little dots in the corners and then I cut a little bit further than the dots. That way I had something to glue to the back. Once I was done cutting the first one, then I'm going to measure, like trace out the other ones and cut all four of those down as well. And make sure that you do not throw away the scraps because I'm about to show you some freaking phenomenal projects with the scraps you guys and I had no idea like what I was doing I honestly had other projects in mind and when I was doing the last video's frame um the spring DIY with the chicken wire after I put the chicken wire on I had this idea and I was like shoot that would have been so cute but I had already stapled them down so that's what I was teasing in the last video that I had another idea and it just dawned on me when I was doing the last project so if you guys did not see that I will leave that linked in the pinned comment as well as the description as well <laughs> Ah, y'all know I can't talk as well as the description box below for y'all um, I'll also leave it at the end of the video so if you didn't catch it definitely check it out it's a good one um, but once I had all of my pieces cut out then I'm going to give them two good coats of my white Waverly chalk paint now these are a little bit tricky to paint because they have those gorgeous raised details when you paint it on you want to brush it and then make sure that you're going in a swirling motion. That way you can make sure that you cover the entire piece. If not, you are going to have spots where the paint doesn't touch it. And you're going to be able to see that silver through there. So I made sure to really coat these good. And I did dry in between coats. Now for the second coat... Um, you can either dab it on or you can swirl it. It's totally up to you. Um, but in order to make sure that you don't have streaks and I don't know, it just looked wonky when I tried to brush it. So just make sure that you're dabbing it or doing a swirling motion when painting these. So I once again hit it with my blow dryer because y'all know, y'all know I'm super impatient. And then once they were completely dry, then I used that same chip brush. Now I get these chip brushes from Home Depot, if you were wondering. Um, I also have some chip brushes linked in my Amazon shop down in the description as well as the pin comment. And I just dab my chip brush into my antique Waverly Wax. I dab off the excess and then I light handedly dry brush over all these details. Now I go in one direction and then I go in another direction layering that wax. And you guys look how gorgeous this is. This is my favorite part bringing out all of those stunning farmhousey details. I literally am loving this project already. Once I was satisfied with my dry brushing, again, I do layers. So sometimes I go a little bit more heavy handed. Sometimes I do layers, but with this, I definitely went in layers. I went light handed and then I accidentally went a little bit too heavy handed on one of them. And I was like, oh shoot, I really like that look. But as you can see here with farmhouse decor, it's not perfect. So I was a little bit more heavy handed in some spots and more more light handed in other spots again I just personally like that look but if you don't like the look of dry brushing then totally skip this step but I did use some antique gold rub and buff to go over those details and you guys this sheen that it gives it is just so gorgeous I absolutely love it so once I was done doing the rub and buff and my dry brushing I made sure they were completely dry and then I flipped my frame over I ran a bead of hot glue 
as close as I could get to the like inside of the opening of the frame on the back and then I laid my wall tiles down to secure them. Last but not least, I had this wreath in my stash from a while ago when I did my bedroom decor makeover video. If you guys did not see that, I can link that in the cards in the right hand corner. But I had these wreaths and they were a little bit too small so I kept them in my stash and it was absolutely perfect for the middle of this project. So the last project from last week I just took the wreath off of that and sat this right on that shelf and you guys I absolutely love how this turned out. I can't wait to hear what you guys think down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for being here. If you guys are enjoying this video, I would greatly appreciate if you would share it out and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps my channel to grow. And you guys, we are so close to 100K. I have worked so hard to get here, but I could not have done it without you. I just want you to know if you are here, I greatly appreciate you. I cannot do it without you. So again, please share this out, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's jump back in. Okay, you guys, you could do this project with your eyes closed. Now, I just took that scrap piece of that wall tile, and y'all, this is a cheese jar. I love to save stuff like this. I love the detail at the bottom. So I just washed the jar really well and let it dry. And then once it was dry, I took this wall tile. I measured out a piece to go around the top portion that was plain, kind of like where the sticker went. And then once I had it cut down to size, then I took the plastic off of the back of the wall tile and I just glue that down. Now it didn't want to stick very well together, so I did put just a little bit of hot glue to make sure that it stayed down really nicely. Next, I'm going to take my white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to give this two really good coats of paint. Now we're going to be using this for a vase, so I wasn't going to be putting the lid back on or anything. So I did just make sure to go ahead and paint the neck and the top of this jar as well. Of course, I hit it with my blow dryer in between coats. And then once both coats were completely dry, then once again, surprise, surprise, I'm going to use my chip brush and my antique wax to dry brush. Okay, y'all, my little buddy is hungry, so if you guys hear him, no, that's not your kid or your dog or cat. It's my kid. So anyway, um, once the dry brushing was completely dry, then once again, I take my rub and buff and I dry brush all the way around this jar. If you guys have not noticed yet, I love for things to match. I love to make like sets of things and things that look really nice together. I don't know. My brain just like works that way. Let me know down in the comments. Do you guys DIY like that or is it just me? So once the rub and buff was completely dry, then to kind of cover up the edges of this wall tile, I didn't like the way that it looked. So I just put a dab of hot glue in the back of the jar and I wrapped that jute around the bottom until I was happy with the way that it looked. I then repeated those same steps at the top of the jar once again to cover up those edges. 
And that was it for DIY number two. Look how absolutely stunning this turned out. Now, are you guys digging the two different designs, the wall tile and then the design at the bottom? Or would you have left the wall tile out altogether? Let me know. I'm always curious to hear what you guys think down in the comments section below. Okay, you guys, DIY number three. As always, I can't ever choose a favorite, but y'all, this project is so good. Now, I originally made a lantern pretty, pretty close to this a while back. Um, several people have made it without giving me credit, which is fine, but I am the original person who made this lantern to begin with but I wanted to put a spin on it so I took these two little trays or square boxes from Dollar Tree I don't know what you want to call them and I measured out a square dowel and cut it down into four pieces next I'm going to remove the label holders off the front of these box and surprise there were two on one which was pretty cool i just put one actually i put two to the side we only end up using one and then once i removed the labels i'm going to take those scrap pieces of the wall tiles and i'm going to just lay that on the front of my box and then i'm going to measure it out mark it with my sharpie now I get these Sharpies from Home Depot because they will literally write through anything. Uh, water, they're made for construction. So if you're on a construction site and like your piece of wood is wet or whatever the case may be, sawdust, they are made to withstand any type of material so you can write on it no matter what. If you guys know anything about Sharpies, they don't work with sawdust. They don't work with, um, you know, dampness. So I really like these for that. If you ever see them in Home Depot, definitely grab some. But anyway, um, once I measured out the first side, then I'm going to take the plastic off the back and I'm going to glue that down. Now, because we cut this up and it is not connected around the edges, you're going to have to glue down the wall tile to the sticky piece or else your wall tile will just flap in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't want that for high-end decor so make sure that you're gluing that you don't want to uh, display that without it being glued so once I glued down the first piece then of course I measured the second piece I glued that down and then I was like Melissa what are you doing girl why did you not measure out seven more pieces <laughs> and make your life 10 times easier so I kept like holding it up to my box and measuring it and then finally I was like duh girl like what are you doing so once I realized it then I went ahead measured out all of my pieces cut them down and then on the second one I got even smarter and I glued my pieces to the sticky piece before I even pulled it off of the plastic again making my life easier. Now I love to show y'all how imperfect I am. I cannot cut a straight line to save my life. <laughs> <laughs> so some of my pieces did hang over the edges and were a little bit wonky so once I had them on my box then I just trimmed down the edges as best as I could. Now once both of my boxes were covered with the wall tiles now we're going to make the top of the lantern so i take this square wooden piece from dollar tree i also had this little wooden sign from michael's that i got for 99 cents and i start by taking the sticker off i also tried to pull the jute hanger off but it 
it did not want to work. So I took the hanger off of the back. I unscrewed it. And then I took my staple pull and I just removed the staples as well as the jute hanger. Now, before you ever glue anything, make sure that you put it together and see how it looks. That way, if you don't like it, you can always change the piece up, try something different. But I absolutely loved the way that this looked. So I went ahead, I glued down the box from Michael's first, and then I went ahead and glued down the wooden plaque from Dollar Tree on top of that. Now, once again, I am very imperfect. So I cut all of these dowels down and I just realized that they were too short. I didn't have any more dowels that size. So I just went ahead and cut down the dowels that I did have to size. I just put it inside of my lantern. Now remember that about an inch of this is gonna be covered because you're gonna lay your box on top. So I just measured them out cut them down and I had four pieces all together obviously to go in each corner and then I hot glued each piece into the corner and once that hot glue was done was dry yeah once it was done y'all <laughs> once it was dried then I put some hot glue on top of the dowel rods and I arranged my top box right on top next I'm going to flip it over and actually I lied first I'm gonna take this other piece of square yeah other piece of square you guys it's late this video I'm trying to get this video out to y'all so please bear with me I took this square piece of wood from Dollar Tree I took the hanger and the sticker off and then I glued that to the top now this just makes a little cute design at the top of your lantern and then I'm going to give it two good coats of my white Waverly chalk paint once again. Originally, I was going to stain my dowel rods. And I think that would actually look really, really beautiful. So if you guys end up doing that, let me know. But in the end, I did go ahead and I painted my dowel rods. Now, these are kind of tricky. So make sure you are continuing to turn over your lantern and painting as you go because the sides you can't see sometimes I miss them so make sure that you flip it around make sure that you have everything nice and coated and then I go ahead and give the top two good coats as well Once again, after the first coat dries, y'all know I'm super impatient, so I use my blow dryer to get that nice and dry so that I can move on to the next step. But you want to make sure that you're doing a dabbing or a swirling motion to cover that completely. I also painted the bottom box, and I wish I would have done both. I don't know why I didn't, you guys. I wasn't thinking too well. But I would definitely paint both sides. You can even paint the boxes on the insides before you put this all together just to make your life a little bit easier. But as I always say, hindsight is 2020, and I will know for next time. So once again, once my white paint was completely dry, then I did the same thing by flipping it over and dry brushing my antique wax all the way around all of those gorgeous details as well as the top of my lantern and then once everything was dry brushed including the dowel rods then I'm going to glue one yeah I'm gonna glue I'm gonna screw hey that rhymes I'm a poet and I didn't even know it y'all <laughs> Oh my goodness, I'm going to screw the label holder to the Michaels box right above where we stuck the wall tile. I then took my rub and buff once again and I dry brush over those details to make everything look cohesive so that my lantern matches the other decor pieces. And I just feel like it just gives that beautiful shine. It brings out those details even more and I just love the look of this.
Okay, y'all, we're in the home stretch. If you guys are still here, leave me a star down in the comments so that I can know that you made it this far. I appreciate you guys so much. Also, don't forget to share it out, you guys. We are so close to 100K. I literally cannot believe it. I have put my heart, my soul, blood, sweat, tears, money, literally my everything into this channel and bringing you guys amazing DIYs week after week. And I just can't believe we're so close. I have had this goal forever. And you guys, this is our win. This is our channel. It's not just my channel because I would not be here if it wasn't for you. So share this out. Let's get to 100k. I cannot wait to share the plaque with you guys. So anyway, I took this little um, light from Dollar Tree. I took off the bulb and I gave it two good coats once again, dry brushed it with the antique once again, and then surprise, surprise, I used the rub and buff to make it match. Now I'm going to take this C hook and I'm just going to screw that in the top of our lantern and then I'm going to hang our little light. For the last and final step, you guys, I'm going to take this little jar holder, jar hanger, whatever you like to call it. And I thought it was absolutely perfect for the top of this lantern. So I'm going to use my Dollar Tree super glue and I'm going to super glue that down to the top. I'm also going to take one of these little ornaments that I got from Timu, these unfinished circle little ornaments, and it was just a little bit too big. I wanted to cover up that star because I felt that the design on the wall tile just didn't match with a star, so I just cut that wooden circle down. Now, this does work as long as you have a very sturdy pair of scissors, you can easily um, cut that down to size and then I just hot glued that to the top of my jar holder and then once again gave it two coats of my white Waverly chalk paint including the little um part where it's ha where the hanger is um connected and I also gave the handle two good coats drying in between coats as well and then surprise surprise once that was dry I dry brushed it I made everything look nice and cohesive I put the rub and buff on there and you guys you guys I love 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 this lantern I cannot wait to hear what you guys think of it down in the comments section do you guys like it? Do you hate it? Is it okay? Let me know what you think. Would you guys have painted this a different color? I'm curious. So look how gorgeous it looks with all the other decor. Now the possibilities are endless with this. You can take that hanging light out. Now see here how you can see the top and it's not painted. It was after the fact when I was taking the pictures that I was like, duh, Melissa, that was not very smart. But I am going to take it back to the she shed and paint it. Um, so you could put a candle in here and take that light out. It's totally up to you. Let me know. Will you guys be making this? Look how gorgeous that rough and buff looks. Oh my God, you guys, I just cannot get enough of these projects. Let me know what type of projects you guys want to see in the future. I love each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart and soul. If nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy. You are gorgeous. You literally can do any Thing you set your mind to coming from an addict who is almost nine years sober if I can do it I know you can do it as well I just recently lost 80 pounds and I would love to help you guys get fit and healthy again or if you guys want to make money just sharing an amazing product that helped me have so many different benefits and you guys the possibilities are endless in the business I can show you how to work on social media how to earn an income from your phone text my number the word biz right now the kits are literally so discounted and that goes away in a couple days so make sure you reach out to me and with that being said I love you guys with all my heart and soul I'll catch you in the next one bye Join the DIY fam here to your right.